Good morning, everyone. I can't believe I'm finally online because this has been quite a challenge, and I'm not in the mood to be challenged by technology this um, this morning. Uh, for whatever reason, just couldn't get online, and um, all of a sudden, poops, and here I am. Anyway, good morning from sunny Arizona. Although it's not very sunny today because we got an inch of snow. Um, so all the cacti, everything around me is absolutely covered and it's beautiful. Um, I had a crazy idea of start walking around the house with a, with a computer um, so that I can show you the snow, but then I decided against it. Probably not a good idea. But T. Peterson um, from BizChick Blogs also lives in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, she's probably seeing quite a picture out of her window as well. Good morning, T. if you're around. Anyway, uh, oh yes, one more thing before we start. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, I opened my Traffic Generation Cafe for feedback from my viewers as far as uh, what might be wrong with my blog, what can um, use some improvement, what could be fixed. Um, this was one of my blog Fridays, um, blog audit Fridays, and um, I got some good feedback. Um, unfortunately, what happened, though, is um, for some reason or another, everybody started talking about my picture and my hair. So uh, I got a lot of feedback for good and for better or worse about um, do I look better with short hair, with long hair, blonde, brunette, should I smile more in my pictures. And you know what? That's it. It's enough. I don't want to hear a word about my um, about my pictures, my um, my hairdo, um, nothing of the sort. So anyway, so that's out of the way. Um, I am working on a lot of things, on a lot of suggestions that you made um, in the blog audit, and I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate um, you doing that for me because it's. Uh, it's really amazing to have someone take a look at your blog uh, objectively because no matter, no matter how uh, objective we try to be, obviously, uh, it just doesn't work because it's our baby, it's our work, and we love it no matter what. So, so anyway, so today um, nobody wants to wake up for my show today, but you know what, that's fine because it will be posted on my blog and we'll still be able to talk about the same issues. What I wanted to talk to you about, we have talked about the recent uh, page rank change and uh, don't want to talk about it anymore. But the effects that that had on many bloggers is panic because um, along with some upgrades, um, there were many blogs that were left behind, like Traffic Generation Cafe, but also there were many blogs that um, were downgraded, um, which is um, never a good thing, I suppose, um, especially for the blogs that were downgraded. Let me just go to um, my Traffic Generation Cafe show and make sure that everything is working properly and people can see everything. Good morning, Catherine and Connie. So I guess there are people here. For some reason, my um, my show uh, my um, software here does not show that there is anybody online. So I'm not quite sure how to fix it. As I said. I had a lot of problems getting online this morning, so I can't see you guys. So, and if I try to watch myself on the um, on the screen here, then I'm getting a lot of echo. So anyway, so now that I know that there are things here, uh, I mean there are people here. Blah. Um, Adam, good morning. Um, Vivek and Latit. Good morning. Thank you so much. Anyway, um, yes, I am the real traffic secret. You know, I am 
Ed Baby. <laughs> anyway, so good morning to all of you who have joined me. And I'm sorry that I cannot see you during my broadcast. For some reason, something is not working. But just let me know if, um, as long as you can see me, as long as you can hear me, uh, we should be just fine. Anyway, um, here's what I wanted to talk to you about. And going back to um, where I started with this. Lots of bloggers panicked, and uh, one of the things that they did is they turned their blogs from no follow to do follow. I'm sure most people who are present um, at this chat right now or watching the video after the fact, um, I'm sure you know what that means. If you don't, look it up. Um, but here's the thing. I've heard a lot of advice of um, when you're a new blogger, go do follow because what that does to you, for you for your blog is it brings in more traffic because people are more apt to start commenting on your blog when it's do follow because they are hoping that their links will get a little bit of um, page authority or trust rank or if you have page rank um, even better um, that would be going through their links back to their blog um, and then what they advise and um, the advice that I get, that kind of advice, is from the experts and gurus online. Um, they say shut it down and turn your blog no follow. Well, um, I think it's a little bit like bait and switch, quite honestly. Um, basically, what happens is that um, bait and switch is a legal term uh, which you. Um, Um, in which you basically uh, offer something to someone and then as soon as they ay, ay, ay. what is going on today um, can you please guys let me know that you can hear me okay and um, you can see me okay good morning Katie um, and question from Latit um, my I need my glasses because I can't see anything. I can't see the chat without them. Um, Traffic Generation Cafe right now is um, at um, page rank zero. It's been it's about a seven month old blog. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jeffrey and Adam. Um, I'm glad that you can see me and hear me just okay. So now I can watch your chat through the Facebook. So going back to the page rank, so basically what happens is that you start as a do follow blog and then you turn it no follow blog and to me it's bait and switch and to me it's basically um, telling your users, sorry guys and gals, I'm all about SEO, forget about you. Well, I know that a lot of blogs um, turn to no follow after the recent page rank change because it was downgraded. I didn't. Well, first of all, of course, I don't have any page rank, so I have nothing to worry about. But I don't believe that just turning your blog to no follow will increase um, your page rank. Um, I know of a lot of very good blogs, do follow blogs, like Kikolani, um, Christy Hines' blog. Um, it was P, uh, page rank 4. I forgot to check, of course, um, what it is now. I'm going to do it really quickly. And a lot of other blogs that have not been affected um, by the recent uh, page rank uh, change. So they were um, do follow, they remain do follow, and their rank, page rank is still the same, um, if not growing. So that couldn't be the case. So what is the matter and what is the difference? What makes the difference? Um, in my opinion, what you should pay attention to um, the most to is how you do um, how you organize the links on your blog. So right now I'm cha I'm checking Christy Hines' blog and it's actually PR five from PR four. So it actually went up despite the fact that she's a do follow blog. So getting back to our discussion, um, one thing that I'm going to be talking about this week on Traffic Generation Cafe is the plugin that I use for my comments because as you know um, comments usually do leak a lot of authority rank from your blog because every comment cons um, contains a link that um, takes just a little tiny bit of that um, authority off your blog and the more comments you get 
uh, the more authority you're leaking from your blog. And by the way, the more comments you get, the less valuable each link for each comment becomes. That's a discussion for a different um, for a different broadcast. But anyway, so this week I will tell you exactly how I control um, links from my comments and how you. Um, my readers are still getting quality do follow links out of my blog so I sort of found a very happy medium between the two I think um, I'm happy about it uh, most of my readers are not complaining so that's a good thing so we'll talk about that during the week um, Latit, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly um, is asking how do I get numerous comments on Traffic Generation Cafe and it's all about networking, really. Um, I started with zero comments, obviously. Seven months ago, nobody heard of my blog. Um, I formed a tribe of um, like-minded bloggers that had very good content but had no traffic or um, comments, for that matter. So we kind of had a very little group um, that started commenting on each other's blogs and that sparked interest in the social circles and provided some social engagement proof that we needed. And again, I wrote all about it on my blog so you can look up um, Tribe, um, it was called EIF Tribe. Um, just look that up on my blog and you'll find a post about it. Um, and the rest of it is just engagement, the fact that I talk to you guys, that you know who I am. Um, I'm very active in blogging community. I do guest posts. I do comments on other blogs. So all of that really does work in bringing more traffic to my blog. And um, in turn, I also try to ask my commentators or my readers, I should say, to some sort of questions that will engage them in um, comments. So. Uh, anyway. Latit. Oh, I'm sorry, Lalit. See, even with my glasses, I can't see very well. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so going back to do follow, no follow issues. First of all, I'm still for do follow blogs because we are not, search engines are not going to make us money. Our readers are. And our readers are more likely to come to our blog and staying on our blog and commenting and looking around, looking around our um, affiliate links as well, if they have some sort of trust established with us. And I do believe that do follow establish that trust because they see that you are you're opening your blog to them and they respond respond to you um, in likeness. So I think it's still a very good uh, way of um, of blogging, keeping your blog, do follow. Um, Alex Wally, um, I see, haven't made it here yet. Um, he was supposed to. And I actually wanted to ask him a couple of questions because he went from PR2 to PR1 and he did turn his blog no follow, hoping that that would plug in some links, um, outgoing links, uh, outgoing link juice, and will bring his. Um, blog back to PR2 and above. My question again, what's the point? What's the difference? PR is not going to make me any money. Um, my users and my readers are, so it's all about engagement on the blog. But anyway, let me get a coffee drink here. My throat is getting hoarse and my coffee is getting cold. Never a good thing. So anyway, um, so common control, first of all, I will write, I wrote a blog about it, so um, write, uh, read about it on Tuesday. The next thing is uh, what a lot of bloggers are doing is they're overusing widgets in their sidebars. Uh, widgets like most popular posts, most commented posts, top commentators, uh, most whatever posts. Uh, and what it does is that it creates a lot of links on each page because those widgets are being shown on each page. And uh, basically you're trying to circulate all those links within your blog. 
they do stay within your blog, but it's still not a good thing because each page has way too many links out. So you, what you need to do is cut down on those things. Um, it's good to have a couple of them for navigation purposes. It's good to have, for instance, most commented um, blog posts if you have a lot of comments. If you don't, don't do it because that would be negative social proof. People will come to your blog and see most commented widget on in your sidebar and then they see that you know the most commented one has 10 comments and half of them are yours. Not a good idea. Um, anyway, Lalit is asking why um, a lot of people give a lot of importance to PR. No reason really. Oh, thank you, Jeffrey. My hairstyle does invite a lot of comments, and I talked about it. I'm not sure if you heard about it, but in the beginning of this um, broadcast, I said, no more. That's it. No more talking about my hair. Long, short, blonde, purple. If I want to go purple tomorrow, that's the way it's going to be, and I'm not going to change my picture on my blog. That's it. So anyway, going back to... Um, into our conversation. So anyway, plug those links on your blog. All those widgets, take them out, take them away. Um, the next thing is you need to start to learn how to uh, flow page rank within your posts. Here's what I mean by that. Um, you definitely need to link out to some resources. You can't just uh, be the kind of blog that just links within itself and never quotes any sources. Google is not looking for that. That probably uh, might be a good sign of a spammy blog to them because a normal and natural blog always links out. And as you know me, I link out a lot to everybody in every single post. And that's because I appreciate my commentators, I appreciate my, le uh, my readers, and I appreciate the fact that you guys come to my blog and you participate and um, you mention my posts in your posts. So I like to link to you as well. So the more you network with me, hint, hint, the more links you'll get out of my blog to your blog. But you still need to be very smart about it as well. You can't just, you know, I. There is no fast and hard rule about it, but I would keep, you know, two, three links out at most per post. But also, you need to link strategically within your blog. For instance, if I write uh, a post on traffic generation, I will find a couple of other posts on traffic generation and link to them within my article with the anchor text traffic generation. So that's how you increase um, you show search engines what your site is about, what your post is about, and hopefully increase your rankings by just linking the right way within your blog. And I actually wrote a post about that, which I will put a link to at the end of this video so you can take a look at it. And so that would be the third way how you control the links within your blog. So uh, let me just go quickly over your questions. Um, question from Lalit um, is linking to other sites increasing the bounce rate of your blog? Absolutely not. Your bounce rate, um, what determines your bounce rate really are your readers. If somebody comes to your blog, um, do they First of all, do they like your blog? Do they like the design of your blog? Is it inviting for them to stay? Second of all, the contents. And yes, design comes before contents because first of all, we're visual people. We'll see what we see. We'll like it. We'll stay. we read some content. Then the content becomes an issue. If it's not strong enough, they will leave. If your audience came through search engine search, and um, let's say um, I, somebody, somebody came to my blog through traffic generation, but they don't see anything about traffic generation on the, my blog on that specific page that they came to. They're going to leave. So those kind of things are affecting um, blog bounce rate. And also what bounce rate is really all about is whether your readers will come to your blog, stay on one page, and leave that page versus 
they will click on more links, meaning that you will engage them enough for them to go ahead and check out your blog. That's what decreases your bounce rate, and that's what really determines your bounce rate. How many other pages, or actually more than one page, your visitors um, went through while on your blog. I actually did write a very good blog post. You know, I write a lot of blo good blog posts. Um, I did write it on bounce rate, and I will post it um, on my post along with this video later today. Adam, um, Adam submitted a link. I will check it out later, Adam, um, and people can take a look at it right now. Connie Singh, uh, how did you get so many links so quickly? You know, it, it, it really is all about the fact about my content. Because my content is so good, most of the links came from my readers. Um, they started mentioning my content in their blogs. Um, honestly, I'm so busy with my blog that I absolutely have no time for link building. I'm not hiring anybody. I'm not outsourcing that, although I, maybe I should. But I don't have time for link building. So most of my links do come from my readers linking to me. Um, so if you write good enough contents, if you network with the bloggers, you will get the same result because that's, that's how I got there. Um, how did I find the bloggers to join my tribe? Just by reading other blogs. Um, I went to a forum. Uh, it's called betternetworker.com. It was initially organized by Mike Dillard and the people that are, are associated with him. And um, it has a lot of MLMers. Um, a lot of people that um, are told to start a blog, so they do, they don't know why they started a blog, but they have it. So um, I kind of started reading their blog, seeing who has good content, but not quite enough traffic. And I just basically approached them and say, hey, why don't we make a group and um, see if this works? And it did work. So you can, um, the only advice I can give you uh, right now is keep it small, um, keep it to the minimum, and um, I'll post a link to that at the end um, in my Sunday blog post as well. So seems like I'm getting a lot of questions here today. <laughs> Hector was actually initially one of my, um, Hector Cuevas was one of my initial tribe members. So we have remained very good uh, friends. I have done his blog audit early on. So um, I'm very fond of the guy. I think he's. Um, he is a very bright guy, and the fact that what he's doing with podcasting I think is pretty good. He created his own product. I highly recommend that you check it out because I will. Um, sounds like something I definitely need to add to my arsenal of uh, traffic generation is podcasting. Um, Lalit is asking if hiring for um, is outsourcing some tasks for your blog a good thing or a bad thing? You know, I'm all for outsourcing. Uh, the problem with outsourcing, though, it's very hard to find reliable people that will do the work well. I have hired um, think, uh, people in the past. They usually quit within a couple of weeks after they learn everything they need to learn from me. So there's always that risk. And also, you have to decide what it is that you uh, can or want to outsource. For instance, I would never outsource the content writing on my blog because the content is what makes traffic generation what it is. And if I outsource that, then um, I will lose, lose you because the quality will definitely go down, so I won't do that. So yes, there are some things you can outsource and should outsource, like technical support on your site. I don't do that anymore. Um, I have someone who does monthly maintenance on my blog, and that's um, that's a great um, thing to have. So um, uh, let me just uh, scroll back just a little bit to see um, what I'm missing here. If I'm missing any questions, 
Uh, Tom says that my understanding is that the links out don't reduce your PR or link juice. Link juice is just divided among the total number of links. Yes, it is divided the total number of links, but at the same time, as the links go out, so does the juice and authority. So you do need to find a way to control that. Um, for instance, on oh, another thing what I do on my blog, even though I, I have a very busy blog, I still answer pretty much every comment. I've been kind of lagging behind lately because I've been a little bit busy. But I do answer all comments by um, myself. And um, I started deleting um, comments that are not necessarily spam. They kind of sort of express an opinion based on the blog post, but they clearly do the, um, make the comment for link building purposes only. They don't mention their names. Um, they just put a link to their site, and um, a lot of times it's unrelated site as well. Um, I started deleting those kind of comments because I don't think I should link to unrelated sites. Um, it's just my theory based on absolutely nothing, but um, sometimes when I feel like the comment warrants it, I'll just delete it. So um, that's sort of a little way. It doesn't help much, but it helps a little bit controlling um, who you're linking out to and controlling the quality of, be because the quality of who you're linking out to also matters. So be careful. Again, going back to trackbacks, when people link to your blog through trackback, make sure it's a valid trackback. It's not a spam auto blog because then if you approve that trackback, that means that you will link out to their blog and that's a real big no-no. Don't do that. So more outgoing li links equals less authority, not necessarily. Your authority depends on the links that are coming in, really. That's what depends your authority. But you share that authority with the links going out. So, you know, it really doesn't matter that much because we're all users. We're not techies. What I know about SEO, what I learn about SEO is only how it pertains to my blog and how it can make my blog better. I'm not one of those people who is sitting and um, trying to figure out how to not scam search engines, that's a bad word of course, but just to find ways to promote my blog and push it up the search engines no matter what. I don't have time for that. I focus on my users and I let my users take my blog up the search engine rankings. So. You know, just uh, I don't overthink those kind of things. You know, I do things that are sensible to me, that make sense to me, and I'll stick with that. Um, if so, how the content farm dealing with it? Um, Adam, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, just kind of clar clarify that a little bit to me. Lalita is asking if I submit my blog to blog directories to get traffic. Um, you'll never get any traffic from blog directories. You will get some low quality uh, links which really will not do much of anything for your blog unless you have a very narrow niche blog. When you have a very narrow niche blog, um, you can throw a bunch of very low quality, quality links to it and still might have a very good shot of ranking highly for it. When it comes down to a blog like mine, Traffic Generation, it's supposed to rank for some very competitive terms. Um, a lot of junk links are not going to help me. That They might actually harm me. So I don't do article spinning. I don't do... Um, 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 blog directory submissions, unless it's um, a directory like um, DMOZ or something like this, you know, something that has some authority to it. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't do it. I don't have time for it, and I don't think it matters. I don't think it um, creates any traffic or any adds any authority to your blog. Um, how to get more incoming links without linking to any other blogs? 
One way I know is guest posting, and the other way is to exchange links with other bloggers. Um, obviously, link, links, ex, link exchange, reciprocal linking is not the best way of doing it because Google has a very good way of tracking um, that, for instance, if you add a blog to your blog role um, on your site, which I don't recommend you have a blog role on your site because that's just links leaks um, the authority from every single page on your blog. But let's say you do that. Um, you add that blog to your blog role, they add your blog to their blog role. That's pretty much reciprocal link exchange and uh, there's no sense in doing that. Um, guest posting, yes, guest posting is one good thing. Uh, writing good content and then writing it in a way that you can actually ask other bloggers to link to you. Say, hey, this is a great article. If you liked it, uh, would you please um, link to it um, t uh, from your blog? I've done it before. I've done um, challenges. Uh, one of them was very recent. You might have participated in it. When I wrote an article and I made, um, I basically made it a challenge to a lot of bloggers and said, write me articles, blog posts on your blogs on these seven topics, any of these seven topics, link to my blog post with my anchor text and I'll choose the, bag, the best uh, posts and I will post them um, on my blog. So I basically got a lot of one-way quality in content links with my anchor text in them back to my blog and in exchange I gave links to those bloggers that um, did that for me. So that was a win-win situation. You just have to be creative. Um, there are different ways of doing it. And you know what? If you watch me, honestly, if you read my blog on a daily basis and you watch how I do things, I hold nothing. You can learn anything and everything that I do on my blog that has brought me down to, um, I think, about 13,000 is my Alexa score. Everything that I did, I talk about. So just read my blog on a daily basis if you can, or at least browse through it on a daily basis to see if I um, reveal some nuggets like that. Sometimes I don't say that's what I'm doing, but if you read carefully, you will know. Um, again, um, I did not submit my blog to any blog directories whatsoever. Um, and I'm not uh, it's okay, Lalit, and I'm not um, planning on doing it. Adam was asking, um, do my subscribers receive every post up update? If you're talking my email subscribers, no. I do not send them a daily email saying, hey, I made a post, come and read it, because that's redundant. That's what RSS uh, feed subscription is for. People who want to be notified of my new posts should subscribe to RSS. Um, if you decide to um, get on my email list, what you're going to get is different kind of tips, tips that I might not be even publishing on my blog post, notifications. You won't hear from me all that often, maybe two, three times a week. So it, it's really very different because I want, if you're on my email list, I want to have give you value that is different from what you can read on my blog anyway. Because what's the point of you joining my email list if all I do is tell you what's on my blog? You can read it on your own. So you just need to come up with a different way of communicating with your email list subscribers. Um, there's no other way um, about it. Thank you, Vivek. Um, he's saying that um, he is following my tips and his traffic is improving and I'm very, very happy to hear that. That's, that's what I'm here for and thank you. Um, uh, just a word on, I'm, I'm going to start wrapping up here because um, I'm going to church, I'm leaving for church in about 15 minutes from now, but anyway. Um, so, uh, Niches. I get a lot of questions about different niches, and um, the questions usually are, how do I promote my niche? 
First of all, if you don't know how to promote your specific niche, do you know enough about that niche to start a blog about it? Because if you know the niche, then you should know your target audience. Then you should, should have done your research um, beforehand. Um, for instance, I was giving advice about um, a real estate niche, somebody wanting to um, engage real estate agents in more social media exposure. And um, my point, when I took a look at it, I, I didn't see why they would want to because, anyway, I don't want to make it too long. My basic point here is that if you have a niche blog, you'd better know who your target audience is. You'd better Google it. You'd better go to forum, forums that might be talking about your niche and see what they're talking about, what kind of information they need. Um, go to social media, choose social media that fits your niche. It doesn't have to be Twitter or Facebook. It might be LinkedIn, it might be something more specific where your target audience hangs out at. So you need to um, find out all of that about your niche. And if you don't know, maybe you're in the wrong niche to begin with. So, I have to go. Church is calling. I loved having you here, guys. I will post some, if, if, if there are some questions that I did not cover today um, during this broadcast, I will post them in the post um, later on today, along with the recording of this video. I will also um, link, um, do some links um, for, to the post that I mentioned today. Thank you so much for having, for spending the Sunday with me and having the coffee. Um, Kat, it's so nice to see you all the way from Switzerland. I really love it. Um, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, Anna, signing out, Traffic Generation Cafe, and I'll see you here um, next Sunday during a live broadcast. And don't forget to read my blog. Here I am, checking out. Bye-bye.